Hello there everyone and welcome to Attila Total War with the mod Medieval Kingdoms uh, 1295 AD. So this is as close I guess we're gonna get to Medieval 3. Unless of course, I mean given the, um, the rate of the games coming out here after Rome, it seems to be going to sort of a medieval age. Even though Total War has, uh, they have said that they're not going to do a uh, Medieval 3. Uh, but we might see something in the future in the Medieval Era. Anyways, they've made a mod to depict the Medieval Era within Attila Total War. And so I thought I would go ahead and play that. Uh, quite a few people uh, thought this was a good idea during... Uh, the vote, although it wasn't the second uh, most voted after the World War One mod. But anyways, I like the idea, and so I'm going to do it. And uh, let's go ahead then, and let's see, there we are. And we're going to go Medieval Kingdom, and we have a number of different factions. So we've got France, Holy Roman Empire, we've got the Kingdom of Castile, the Kingdom of Hungary, the Emirates, of Granada, Kingdom of England, Scotland, Duchy of Burgundy, Kingdom of Aragon, Kingdom of Sicily, the Teutonic Order, and Kingdom of Poland. And I've already take the, taken a look at the different factions a little bit, and I have decided that I'm going to play as the Holy Roman Empire. And so, yeah. We've got Henry the, let's see, seventh of the Holy Roman Empire. And I think without further ado, we'll go ahead and start. I should mention here that we have put it on very hard difficulty. So we'll see how that goes. And uh, yeah, uh, I've already tested that this a bit. I haven't played Attila uh, a lot. And I certainly haven't played the... Uh, Age of Charlemagne, which this mod is built on top of. So w what we have is um, these kinds of... I'm not entirely sure. One thing I haven't really at all taken a look at is how sort of to do the building stuff. Like what buildings I'm put, go, put together and so forth. Um, but anyways, since there's a lot of just managing the empire at the start, I'm going to go ahead and just outline what the problems I have in the start and uh, since I want to fit a battle in the the first video here um, I'm probably gonna skip a lot so you don't have to see all the different like setting up the trade routes because that's gonna be a lot of trade routes so I'm just gonna go over some of the diplomatic stuff and some of the problems we are facing so let's go over to diplomacy first so we have a number of different vassal states and uh, not a lot of enemies. The only enemy we're kind of bordering is the Duchy of Savoy. And there, I believe, is at war with... Yes, they're at war with one of my puppets, namely the Duchy of Bavaria. And so we most likely is going to... This is where the battle is going to be this video, I think. Unless someone else decides to declare war on us. Uh, but we actually... Uh, control part one third of the uh, province of Burgundy, and we have the the city in that province, which is Lyon. Um, so that's probably going to be the battle. But let's just go over the um, the vassals we have. So Duchy of Bavaria, as I've already mentioned, is one of my puppet states. Uh, then we have the Duchy of Brandenburg, which is up here. And then we have, do, 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 let's go down here, and we've got the Swiss cantons as our vassal as well. And then we've got military alliances with France and the Papal States. And then I believe we've got, uh, well, a few of these are same people, which I'm not entirely sure, but I'm gather uh, it's it makes it easier to sort of... Um, annex those nations uh, through through peaceful means if they are the same uh, people so we've got the duchy of uh, austria we've got bavaria as well but uh, we already had them we have 
the Duchy of uh, Friesland, the uh, Duchy of Saxony, the Duchy of uh, Thuringen, and let's see, and actually France as well. So that could be that could be a major deal to put France in there because that's really the ma other major power in Europe here, or the real great empire compared to all the smaller nations. And uh, it's lucky for me that we actually start off as allies here. I actually start off with a strength rating of one, and he's the second one. So uh, we start off with a good, really good spot with the two great empires or the two great kingdoms allied with each other. And I don't have a lot of enemies, as we can see. Uh, Duchy of Savoy. We've got the Hungarians, I believe, not too happy with us, and. The Republic of Venice is not too happy with us. And then we've got the Muslims down here. But we don't really know of them just yet. So n there's not too much to say about that. Then we can go down to the problems of actually managing the kingdom. So the problems within the kingdom. And that we can go to... No, this is not the one I wanted to go to. Let's see. There we go. There we go. So here we go. We can see a few things here. We can see the uh, the resources are enabled, and we've got copper, two vine, uh, some lead, and salt. Not entirely sure what they do, but they probably do something. I imagine copper could. Well, actually, none of these iron I can imagine has something to do with weaponry and stuff. But other than that, you know, I don't know if. I mean, I mean, I guess you sell them, obviously, but uh, not more anything inter more interesting than that. Also, note that no one starts off with any uh, armies or anything, so you'll have to build that up on your own. Um, what we want to go through, we've got. Oh, we can go through the. I should have gone here for the diplomatic status. It's a lot easier to uh, see who I'm allied with and who. We are who are the um, the puppet states. We got puppet of Brandenburg up here. We've got the uh, the Swiss cantons, uh, Duchy of uh, Bavaria right there. Very nice. And in the middle there, unfortunately for these guys, probably going to be an next at some point of me and then my allies in France. But what I wanted to take a look at is public order, which is a problem in my two northern provinces. So we're we have Angria, the province of Angria, which I only hold one third of, and they're very unhappy. Same with East Falia, which I own two thirds of, um, but not actually the city, Mag um, city of Magdeburg. Uh, but these are also very unhappy, and that is because of the religion. So most of these, as you can see, Catholic Europe, but up here. We have a lot of pagans, and here we have a mix of pagans and uh, Christians. Mostly Christians, but a bit of pagan. But here it's a lot of pagans. So we need to turn those guys, especially our own provinces, because they're very unhappy. Um, because of the fact that they're being ruled by Christians. Kind of interesting here is they actually made Judaism. But uh, we'll see if there actually is a U Jewish state or if there's like, I don't know how you the Jews would spread, really. Um, sanitation, immigration, food. Food is another problem, which I think we start off with. Uh, but other than that, and here we got faction ownership, so a clear overview of wh what we control. So plus the, um, my... Um, vassals we've got oh now uh, shown over Austria as well but we've got quite a large empire so very nice um, and so what I'm planning to do is I don't think we'll put uh, the king out to uh, to uh, put him in charge of an army instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put him in charge of Franconia as a uh, what's it called as a governor but we're gonna keep the others to spawn armies and we're gonna spawn one in the north to try to hold these guys down um, probably actually it's better to spawn him 
in Hallstatt, which is our capital. So we're going to spawn one general over here. We got a rider, cavalry recruits, logistic, and champion rider. So two champion. I think we're going to go with this guy. The um, oh yes, let's see. Loyalty. So not everyone's loy very loyal. So this guy is not very loyal at all. He's three out of ten. So we're probably not going to put him in charge of the other army. So it's going to be this guy, which is going to be in charge command. of the army going north to make sure that these guys do not rebel. So he's going to. We're going to put him inside to the city duties, actually, men. and we'll have to recruit some troops. Um, I don't know. Up, Let's lads, just something like that. Life. We only have three units that we can. Uh, recruit and then for the army that's probably going to go into battle we're going to raise this guy uh, Kelwin raise we him for and we're going to put him men. in the city and so Kelwin has oh he has got a few uh, heavy um, sergeants we're going to take one of each it's for some reason I don't know if this is a thing with um with uh, what's it called Attila but night. it just says like poor armor piercing and average block but it doesn't actually say the points as I probably would have liked to see the points instead of uh, s showing you know poor armor very poor missile block so I just by looking at the points I would get a better picture myself of what it means rather than just having these stats that could be mean really anything and then we're gonna go ahead and we're going to start for Court Scholar, which is going to lead on to Lex um, Salica, which does public order legislation enacted to smooth the running of the kingdom and the moral and sp spiritual wealth of the kingdom. And we're going to save up uh, our money because we're going to try to build uh, some churches up here to make sure that we can Christianize this. I think we can actually go ahead and... Uh, yes, we can. We can go ahead and uh, inspire public order. We'll take this guy then. So we got a priest. I'm going to send them north and try to beat the paganism out of them. We've got an assassin in France for some reason. We don't need him there. They're our allies. Same with a spy, which I got down here. We're going to send the spy towards uh, Grenoble instead to see what those guys are up to up there in the mountain I'm as we prepare now. our army down in Lyon. Um, so I'm probably going to do quite a few turns here um, without actually showing you like the, the things that's going on because uh, as I said I wanted to show battle in the first video and if I just do the sort of building stuff and the other um, it's probably going to take quite a while but I'm, I'm going to tell you the important stuff before we go into battle. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you guys then. And there we're back and we're ready now to join in the Bavarians by attacking the... Uh, was it the Dukedom? Or was it the Duchy of Savoy? So what happened was that the army of Savoy actually marched out and marched to our territory up here where oh, I managed see. to use the assassin to stop them or harass them to the point where they could not continue any further so they kind of stuck over here not entirely sure where they were going I guess they were heading over to actually fight the Bavarians which are all the way up here not entirely sure how they thought they were going to go through there without um, passing through, I mean, the mother nation of uh, the empire. And so I've actually, so I've stopped them there and I've sent forward my army to lay this place under siege. It doesn't have any walls, which is good because I don't have any catapults. Uh, but I also want to say what happened in the meantime uh, because this is two years since we started, since th this started in 1295. And now we're at 1297. So two years later, I've sort of got the empire a bit more under control. We've got a bit more armies and stuff. So I placed an army here. Mostly just, it's a rather small army. It's just to keep the peace of the region. 
and so most of it is under control but what I've realized is that a lot of other places have problem with the foreign religion or the paganism so this one is actually falling in Christianity um, uh, Austria which is falling uh, Franconia is also falling the only ones uh, that are rising are the ones that we had problem to start off with so it's really the regions close by which are pagan that are um, unfortunately causing problems for us and so we really want to turn those those guys around so right now these two are rising in Christianity while these two are losing although I am building priories and chapels all over the place to turn that around. Also I should mention Denmark went ahead and attacked my vassal in uh, in the form of Duchy of Brandenburg. Uh, the Brandenburgian army is I believe that the Brandenburgs actually defeated the... Uh, well they might just have pushed away. I think they've defeated this one and then they've got the Danish got a second army to come in so we'll see how that goes right now I don't really have an army to send to L aid them but if um, the Danish go ahead and actually take a province from the uh, uh, Brandenburgians, Brandenburgians um, we're gonna have to send probably this army is gonna have to march up one thing though is I don't really have the ability to recruit a lot of like interesting troops here um, so I'm hoping that we can get up to barracks and stuff but it unlocks handgunners and crossbows because right now one thing that my army lacks is missile units I don't have a single one also kinda need catapults as well if we're actually gonna lay siege at some point to a proper town anyways with that introduction let's go ahead and attack so we outnumber the enemy by 1,000 men. They've got crossbowmen though, so it's going to be interesting to see how this goes. So without further ado, let's attack them. Oh! Um, so the enemy actually sallies forth to meet me on the field of battle rather than to... Uh, to uh, stay inside the town, so we're gonna feel them. O we're gonna fight on the battle. Oh, there, there's the town. We can see it over there. And we would have actually—that's the place we would have fought at. I wonder why they moved out. It's not like that's gonna help them. We're gonna wait until we have favorable weather conditions. We're gonna wait quite a while. Uh, we're not gonna escape the rain, it seems. Start deployment. Uh, the thing is, it. I mean, the um, the weather conditions. I think that there should be a risk. So if you wait, that you know, you especially if there's rain, you could wait. Kind of wait for it to stop. You can sort of have that uh, option to try to wait until it stops. But if you wait in the rain for too long, like the the day goes by. Your men like you become more tired or something like that. Um, could be an interesting thing. So the enemy starts on top of this hill. Well, we start down there. Um, the thing though is, I'm pretty sure that our army is. They would. I mean, we have a thousand more men. So our army is definitely bigger than theirs so I'm not entirely sure why they thought that was gonna be a good idea to um, try to uh, take us on on the field of battle rather than uh, rather than in the city so since this is the first one let's go ahead and take a look at our units so here we've got our heavy knights and we can see them here with the uh, with our banner, the uh, Adler, the German uh, eagle. There's the general. There he is. I'm gonna go ahead and close in on him. 
He's not that loyal to me. He's only got four out of ten. So he's not super loyal. Uh, which might be bad because this province is situated quite a way far away from the rest of my kingdom. Then I believe we've got the sort of... Uh, what, was, what was these? The heavy sergeants. Spears! So these are these guys. The heavy sergeants. Looks like... Isn't that the symbol of... Oh, I don't know. Um... I kind of want to say, I mean, with the red and the white horse, I want to kind of say Hanover. But that's not actually under our control, and I don't think it's in the um, in the game anyways. So here we got those guys. Then in the center, the unit which we have the most Mental is service. the heavy sergeants. Um, not that big of a difference, more than that their, uh, their weapons are a lot longer. I wonder if they've got... Do they have, like, spear wall or anything? No. Seemingly, they don't. And so that is the main portion of our army. Is uh, these guys. And then in the forest, we've got uh, the... Spears! What are these called? The spear sergeants. So we've got spear sergeants, heavy sergeants, and heavy sergeants. Early... Oh, so the these guys are from early period, and these are late period. And then, on the furthest flank here, we've got the crossbow cavalry. Right. Let's go ahead and start the battle. So I want to see what the enemy does first. Are they going to come off the hill, maybe? Yes, they are. Or they're going to move to meet us. They're going to angle their army, so they're facing us. And they've got kind of a... A really thick formation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lead all my cavalry under the command of the general. He's going to lead them in a flanking maneuver while the rest of the army is going to advance on the enemy. The crossbows, they're going to flank around on the other side. We have a great advantage in manpower, so we're gonna take advantage of by that by encircling the enemy with the with the cavalry, and we're gonna move up our infantry to take on the enemy uh, from uh, the front. It's probably gonna take a while for them to march up here. So here they are. It's going to be some pretty nice screenshots out of this. Let's see. Can we speed this up? This is going to probably take forever if we're going to slowly just march up onto them. We can go into this map mode. Um, I'm not entirely sure how uh, if anyone really plays as this. But it kind of gives you that documentary battle feel. This is always how they do it in the documentaries, and they show the the squares moving around. So they're reforming their armor a bit. I guess we can start off by having the crossbow cavalry come up from behind and start pelting them, put them at unease. So in a real life situation, marching here with the rain and having waited as I did for so long, my men would probably have been quite tired and heavy with the rain and the water soaking on them and then they're gonna have to march uphill towards this position and we don't really have anything um, sort of to respond to their uh, to their arrows they're moving in quickly now so I'm gonna tell the cavalry to move up quickly as well uh, are these set to you know, skirmish skirmish away from the enemy position so we're getting hit there and one thing as well which I kind of noticed is that these guys don't have any shields do they which makes them very shit they're losing tons of men here so they're very uh, susceptible to uh, the fire of uh, the enemy so these two, you know what, these three, gonna move like that, 
And we really need to get this going. So we're gonna charge in. Charge for the glory of the Empire. And they weren't able to uh, fully uh, turn their unit. Let's see, the, the other unit is smashing there as well. And before it becomes completely the crazy, for our general. Protect him. we want to smash into these guys as well. And we're going to get general versus general. And then we're going to get our men to hurry up and close in on the enemy. Thing is, these battles, they're over so quickly. I guess we can kind of go to slow-mo as we take a look as the heavy sergeants charge in. I'm not entirely sure why they charged charging in like that with an overhead attack rather than using it kind of like a spear impaling the enemy as they move forwards. And we got all these uh, all these halberdiers waving around in the air as they push in on the enemy. Let's go back I guess to normal speed. We've got the enemy surrounded with cavalry fighting them on one side and infantry on the other and over here the general is about to get absolutely crushed as all the troops are swarming in on him as the enemy decided for some reason to split their force and leave the general unit on his own I mean if I speed this up a bit I'm pretty sure the battle is going to be over in a second or two a lot of the enemy units are uh, faltering. We can see the crossbowmen retreating. Oh, uh, all the enemies, more or less, in this units are retreating. The tide of battle turns in our favor. Yes. Let's get the general out. Keep right down those crossbowmen. And then can we focus in the infantry on the few units that still fight on? So most of the enemies are retreating at this point. Let's see if I can get in, maybe get some close-ups, maybe see some heads fly off. So it's an absolute mess here. So the guys in white are the enemy guys. Guy just died. It's an absolute mess. And it's really hard to tell what's going on. Oh, they just rode over that guy. I guess they're retreating at this point, and we're just running over the enemy. Blood and gore. Let's focus in on the general. Now. This should be a lot easier to see what's going on because there's only two units fighting each other. The general and his knights versus crossbowmen. Oh, you don't want to fall down on the ground here when there's heavy horses trampling around. I want to see someone lose their bloody head. Come on. Someone cut someone's head off. Chop it off. I would imagine the cavalry to do a lot better at these against these guys. He just took a swipe at that guy. Where well, wasn't the general? Let's see, where is the general? He's the only one without a helmet. Oh, they're retreating. And so we're gonna run them down God as they God. retreat. We are moments away from victory. It's really hard to spot the general because then everyone kinda looks the same. Is that guy gonna lose his head? 
Nope, but he uh, got cut through the throat. That guy then. No. Guy kind of survived. He just got punched with the shield. Come on, someone needs to lose the bloody head. I guess they're just getting cut down like that. And all the enemy units are defeated. And this battle took about 10 minutes, which, I mean, I'm, I'm not entirely sure what it re I guess it is um, just the, I'm not entirely sure. Like, there's probably some videos on explaining and going through why um, the battles are so short of course at this at this battle I outnumber the enemy quite a lot with a thousand men it looks like there's just a lot of enemy units here so we probably uh, they would have done a lot better I must say they must, must have whoever decided that they're gonna move out from that place there and take us on on the field of battle and we had a, a thousand men advantage he should really get well I was about to say he really needs to get fired but he's probably dead he's probably lying dead here somewhere on the ground right end battle decisive victory for the Holy Roman Empire we only lost 258 men, while the enemy lost 1,414. Holy crap. Decisive victory. And we captured 200 of them. We're gonna go ahead and occupy this, since we want to take this under Ready our control. And what are we going to do? We're going to integrity commander of an army appointed by the ruler himself. Authority. Is there anything that melee defense for infantry unit, morale training for infantry recruits? Um, public order might be good. Army recruitment capacity might be also good. So th I think this one's actually quite good. So we'll take that one. And he's also getting some household items, which I guess he he took from the ground here. Uh, composite bow, no. Um, drill master, runner, battle speed. Um, governed province, but well, he's not governing a province. So there we have it. Given the time as uh, this episode has progressed, uh, it's time to end it. But hopefully you'll come back for the next one to see how I deal with the rest of the army uh, of uh, the uh, Savoyans. Their army is called Terror of Vesex, which is kind of strange. Um, but it's an equal match to our force, given the numbers of infantry and so forth. So that's going to be a much more interesting fight than these guys. This would probably have been a more interesting Commander. fight if the enemy actually decided to stay within town and not sally out to meet us. But, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this one and hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye!